Y'all, thank you for coming. It's a delight to be in Greenville today. As you know, we're having a conference with the economic development from Japan and all the southeastern states are here, and it's, a, it's a very promising to speak in, to these people and to hear their views on the greatness of the southeast and why they want to come to the southeast to do business. And it's a, it's a bright future, but one thing, of course, that always threatens that is lawlessness and people who disregard the law. And the rule of law has been central to prosperity in this country as well as South Carolina. And we are taking another step today, a, a step uh, designed to be sure that South Carolina stays a safe, clean, happy place to live, work, and raise your family. And that is we are, will be proposing legislation to be sure that no sanctuary cities develop in South Carolina. And this legislation calls for the denial of state funds to any government entity which provides uh, essentially sanctuary to lawlessness. South Carolina requires that officers, agencies, and political subdivisions make reasonable efforts to determine whether a person in custody is charged with a criminal offense or is an unlawful alien. They also, those uh, entities cannot be prohibited by anyone from sharing that information related to the immigration status of that person with other federal, state, or local governments for the purposes of determining a whole host of things. Well, that's a good law. That's the way it should be. But unfortunately, in South Carolina, there's no mechanism, no mechanism exists to date to verify the compliance of the local entities, the government entities, with those immigration laws and the reporting requirements. Thus, the, the people have no way of knowing if the local munis municipalities are complying with the state and federal immigration laws. Well, we here today seek to change that. We seek to, we want to trust our people, but we want to verify. We want to be sure that the people are obeying the law. And you've seen other cities around the country have said simply they will not enforce those laws. The laws are on the books, they're perfectly good. They are, are, have not been subject to any sort of successful challenge, yet there are some cities American cities where the authorities simply ignore those laws and those requirements. We don't want that to ever happen here. South Carolina is on the, uh, on the cusp of great economic growth and prosperity. We know there are, are threats to that. There are things that could undermine that. And one is public <coughs> safety, such as represented by the presence of a sanctuary city. And it, particularly in this day when we have the human trafficking going on around the country and the threat that that involves and the criminality that that represents, it is very important that we send the word loud and clear right now to everyone in the country, those who are here illegally and legally, that South Carolina will, will not abide by that kind of lawlessness here. We want people to come here. We want people to invest and grow here, but we want them to be safe here. And although the welcome mat is out for everyone, it is not out for those who would violate our laws. So this is an effort. It is, it is time to do this now before such a thing takes root in our state. And I'm proud that these legislators here today have seen fit to, to step up to introduce this legislation. And Mr. Bannister, if you will, please. Yes, sir. Thank you, Governor. Yes, sir. <clears throat> so the legislation we intend to, to introduce in both the House and the Senate uh, is basically the next step from the 2011 immigration law that the General Assembly passed uh, dealing with this issue. There was a question back then about enforcement. How will we know the laws are being complied with? And what this legislation intends to do is finish the job. We have, as the governor said, very good laws on the books related to how we deal with illegal immigration. Uh, and this is the step to make sure everyone is following the law in South Carolina. Every, um, there's always a question of how do, you, how do you hold people accountable? How do you make sure folks are following the law? <clears throat> and what this legislation is intended to do is make sure there's a financial penalty to any municipality or city uh, that chooses not to follow the law and not get certified by SLED. The effective date is 2019. 
Uh, we are anticipating that SLED will work with Homeland Security and come up with uh, a consistent uh, way to measure whether these cities are following the law. Uh, and with that, I know uh, I'm joined by several representatives and senators behind me, Mark Willis, Mike Burns, Gary Smith, Dwight Loftus, Stephen Long, um, I get everybody, and the governor, and Senator Rex Rice. Uh, and it is our intention to put this at the forefront of the General Assembly in January uh, and try to get some quick action. Thank you. Thank you. Any more comments? All right, any questions? The, the idea behind this is if, if those cities who are not found to be in compliance by filing the appropriate form that Mr. Bannister mentioned will be denied their uh, local government funds for three years and required to comply. Yes, sir. Uh, as far as, as I know, there has been no city to make that announcement. But what we are doing here is attempting to make it clear that such an announcement will not be accepted. We want the people of this state to be able to know that law enforcement is d doing its job in South Carolina, and it cannot do it if the uh, municipality will not allow them to do their job in this very important area, which I. Uh, remind people is getting to be more and more important, particularly with the advent of, of movement around the country in such things as human trafficking, which is a, getting worse and worse. This is one way to keep those sorts of things from taking root in our state. What can you tell us about the, the landscape of illegal immigration in South Carolina? Is it, is it a big problem? Is this happening all around us? Our economic development is such today we are on the cusp of great things. And what we want to be sure that everyone knows, these investors, these companies, people who want to open businesses, whether they're small businesses or large businesses, we want everyone to know that there are some problems that they are not going to have in South Carolina, and one of them is going to be sanctuary cities. We believe in law and order. We believe in the rule of law. And we will not abide. This this says that we will simply our state will not abide with that. Will not tolerate that kind of lawlessness and all that it represents. So this is preventative legislation, even though a problem doesn't really appear to exist. Well, there are a lot of problems that exist that you may not know about until they burst forward. There are a lot of things that uh, surprise people. But one thing we do not want to be surprised by is the kind of lawlessness that's represented by the creation of what is known as a sanctuary city. And believe it or not, there are five or six major cities around the country that have made the announcement that they are simply not going to abide by the law. I don't know how we can tolerate that here in South Carolina. So what we want to do is not get in the, in the business of going back and trying to fix or undo something that has been done, but we want everyone to know, people outside the state, people that want to come here to live, work, raise the children that lawlessness is not allowed in South Carolina. Can you clarify your concerns over human trafficking and how it relates to this legislation? Well, a lot of the, a lot of the human, traf human trafficking in, involves uh, alien uh, people here who are, are not uh, registered to be here, who have not uh, gone through the immigration channels. It's, it's, a, uh, it's a network that is underground mainly, and it, it ranges from children as young as three and four months old up, and up on upwards. It is, a, it is a scourge, and we've seen this kind of thing before in other, in other contexts, way back years ago with the advent of uh, all sorts of obscenities and things on the airways and all that that has produced, but th this kind of trade and trafficking is something that is a blight on the on the entire country, and we don't want it here, and this is one way to, to be sure that it is uh, kept at bay from our state. Governor, can you detail a little bit more about how the follow-up, how the follow-up would work, how you'd actually find out if they yes. weren't obeying the law? There, there, a uh, certification process will be developed with the state law enforcement division and others working with Homeland Security and and other uh, agencies uh, to develop a, a protocol that must be followed by the various municipalities and must be turned in 
uh, submitted uh, on an annual basis uh, to law enforcement, to SLED, guaranteeing that, that that city, that municipality is following the law and has is harboring no such people. And that'll be done on an annual basis. And of course, it'll, it'll be a sworn statement and there are penalties for providing a sworn statement. And if anyone is found to have submitted the false statement or is found to be engaging in sanctuary city type activities, they'll lose their government funding through the local government fund for a number of years. How is it you feel business prosperity in South Carolina would be impeded by there being sanctuary cities? Because when people are looking to considering investing in a city or a town, whether it's expanding a business or bringing a new business in. And we have just in this, this city today, we have a conference where uh, people from Japan, big businesses in Japan are here to do this very thing in, in the Southeast and representatives from uh, the, 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 the Southern states are all here. And they look at a number of factors as, as these, these men here standing here know, they, and they range from A to Z. They go from education, the quality of life, uh, the trees, uh, the grass, the uh, education, but it always, there's always, there are always questions about law enforcement. What is the rate of this? What is the rate of that? What we want them to know is that this is a place where there will not be a sanctuary city of any kind. There exists in other states. We want them to know that this is a lawful, South Carolinians follow the law. We believe in the rule of law. We know it's important, and that is something that they are all interested in knowing. The, the rate of criminal conduct, those kind of things. Bruce, um, Bruce I understand you're going to be the um, chief sponsor of this, and are you planning to pre-file or what? So, yes, we intend to pre-file it uh, before we go back in in January. Governor. Sir. Different subject, real briefly. The, the Greenville County Sheriff, are you aware of the situation there? He admitted having a moral failing last last week, um, an encounter with a subordinate that's consensual. What are your thoughts on that? Are, are you watching that issue? Are you prepared to take any action on that? I'm, I'm generally aware of the issue. I um, have made no uh, no decision, and uh, don't know if there's one to be made at this point. I don't believe this came up in the conversation with the president, but I, I know how I know how he feels about it because I know what the administration is doing. They're doing exactly the same exactly the same thing that we are doing. Uh, uh, I had nice conversations with the president about a lot of things, including how economic development and the power in South Carolina, electric power and the MOX facility and a whole range of other things that these men here are vitally interested in, but uh, but the federal government is, is doing the same thing. And I would encourage every state to do this. It's putting a, fixing the roof after it started raining is, is not the right time to be fixing the roof. You need to get yourself ready and prevent these kinds of things. Fixing them after they happen, fixing something after it's broken is the hard way to do it. The best way to do it is get prepared, be ready, and and to announce in this case in advance that we will simply, that South Carolina will not tolerate that kind of lawless conduct. Governor, we haven't seen you here since Mr. Trump's visit. How would you describe the event? Did it, did it go well for you? Can you tell us how much money you raised? <coughs> well, it went right well. And it was an enthusiastic crowd. I have seen enthusiastic crowds like that with the president every place he has gone. Uh, including when he made his, his announcement back in uh, in January of 2016, as you know, I was there, and uh, he is he brings excitement with him everywhere. He brings hope, uh, he brings excitement, and he brings new ideas, and he brings a bel strong belief in the strength of the people of this country. And we had a big crowd. It was a great event, and I look forward to having more. Yes, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you.